Okay, so I understand it's becoming like the norm for people to hack in computers into their vehicles. This can be like official like aftermarket vehicle computer, media player, car like monitoring circuits and all that. It could just be a laptop that someone stuffed underneath and they have a touch screen on the dash. Or it could be something just absolutely ridiculous like a Raspberry Pi. Not saying that putting a Raspberry Pi in a car is a terrible idea. Uh, I'm honestly reserved though on exactly what I would say about that. Anyways, I wanted to put a computer in my car, but at the same time, I think it's not right to be putting a liquid crystal display inside of a vehicle from the 80s. Um, that's a CRT thing. Putting CRTs in vehicles is a very difficult thing, so you kind of want to look for an all-in-one package. And thankfully, there is a product out there that existed. Motorola's terminal or data terminal division had something in the 80s, actually it started in the 70s, moved into the 80s and into the 90s, and I think it's still around, it's called the MDT, or Mobile Data Terminal. The first generation units were pretty, not really all that useful. It's just a small multi-line plasma displays. I think if you watch the movie Blues Brothers, they actually show one of these and things in action. But if you even just search Motorola MDT, you'll see pictures of this thing as well. The second generation, however, is a little bit where things get fun. Now we have a fully contained device with a CRT screen. It'll support multiple graphics modes. It has a keyboard you can actually use, and it's still pretty small. That is what we're working on in this video here. I wanted to get myself what is known as the MDT 9100 386 series. So in the 386 series, there's the 9100-T, 9100-386, and 9100-WD. The 9100 as according to CryptoMuseum.com. What this is, is that the first T model, or was it the T model? The earliest versions of the 9100, regardless, are a radio unit that connects to Motorola's trunked radio network, and that's about it. It's a dumb terminal. It's not really all that useful. The 386 models, however, are a full-blown PC in a compact enclosure, keyboard, display, lights, power supply. It's all there. It has one small fan, and it's fantastic because you can run MS-DOS in this thing. You can even run Windows 3 if you so desire to put onto that thing. There's one Hackaday article already on someone who upgraded this thing even further with, I think it was a Beagle board. Uh, I gotta double check that myself. Anyways, the link's directly below here, but I wanted one myself, and it's been difficult to get these, mainly because they're police or city works devices. Usually when they're taken out of service, they're just sent out and destroyed. Other times they're very expensive because sometimes they make us great movie props. I think Robocop had one of these things as well. Whatever. But I finally found one. It was a 386 series unit. So that means we have the 386, it would boot to a PC, it has two PCMCIA uh, slots on it, and it also has SCSI, because apparently you need SCSI inside of a car. But I paid, oh, what, it was like $70, $80 American for it, and then I paid, oh, $80 American to get it here. So in Canadian dollars, I paid about $200 after everything was said and done for a unit that looks like crap. Why did I do that? Because I'm taking a gamble. And here it is. It has arrived in its box, and I can feel something rather heavy moving around inside the box, so I'm already pretty worried. But that only leaves one thing left to do. Let's cut open the box, and let's see what's inside of this thing. All right, so let's get this thing sliced open. Uh, yes, it did cost me additional money to get this thing through customs, but oh well. Let's see what we got. From the state of Arizona, how well did you pack this box? Okay, what you did there was you packed the box really badly. Um, okay, so you've wrapped it in, I can see the keyboard on this, but what you've done is that you've actually just wrapped it in plastic and thrown it into a box. Oh, there's a note in here too. Anyways, probably just a receipt. Get rid of that. And out she comes. Uh, it's a lump. There we, it's not even taped all the way around. Come on. When I'm paying $80 for shipping, please do the part and actually make it packaged well. Well, it's not shattered immediately, so that's a good sign. Okay, oh, 
Uh huh. Uh oh. That's. I don't think that's supposed to be separated. That's a bad sign. I can feel a corner that doesn't exist. Motorola Mobile Workstation, made by Motorola, with a little tag sitting right here that says, Made in Israel. Oh, oh. Okay, so this is metal. This is metal. This is plastic. I can feel that's broken. Let's get this. Oh, there's a tag on here. City of Phoenix. Okay, so this is like a city works use system. Ah, oh, the keyboards. Oh no, it is broken. Oh no, little bits of plastic. Look in the corner here. It's taken a hit. Oh no, casualty. It's broken the post too. Okay, now what's this? Okay. Oh no. Well, okay, that's not to be too much expected because if you look at the rest of the unit here, it does look like otherwise crap. Oh, hey, look, look at that. The power connection on the radio here is also bust off. All right. Oh, hey, but they reattached the knob. Okay, so here we go. This is the Motorola MDT 9100-386. It has this keyboard here that has backlighting underneath the unit as well. It has these function buttons here with this nice little emergency button, but it also has this little tiny CRT. And you can't see it in the detail of this video here, but the screen's all scratched to hell. That's not the glass itself, which is kind of like, ugh, that's kind of bad. What you're looking at there actually is there's a plastic cover over the screen. So the CRT is fine. Also, sure, I can see burning and... Okay, I'm not seeing the sign in the middle here that the neck is broken off and the air is blown in and it's caused the phosphor to come off the face of the tube. So the CRT is also probably in excellent shape as well. So yes, it did take a huge hit in the corner here. And okay, yeah, like the whole keyboard is broken. So that's gonna require some epoxy, but cool. Okay, that's the worst thing. The other thing you might not also see in this photograph, in this video here is the keyboard's absolutely filthy. That was seen in the eBay auction. Um, one thing I kind of know about these things already is that even though these are all, this cannot get, this is all like, it's covered in mud and dirt and it got wet. There's actually, where the key stems go in, it's actually flanged upwards. And at the bottom here, there's openings and there's a vent on the bottom and it'll drain moisture out of the keyboard. So even if this gets wet, it's not going to get into the keyboard. And more importantly, it's not going to get under the keyboard and damage the computer, which is hiding directly underneath of this. But there we go. So this runs off of 12 volts. It's really not all that big. It's a 386 system. It runs on DOS. And I'm definitely going to have to make another video on this. And on the underside here, ooh, okay. What do we got here for ports? Okay. Well, I hear stuff rattling around. I can zoom in. There's more stuff falling out. Yes, there's plastic falling out everywhere now. So this is the SCSI port right here. It's a compact mini Centronics, and I have the two serial ports here, and what I assume is a reset button hanging out down here. This, I have not even the slightest idea what the hell that connector is for. My guess is going to be educated, or slightly educated, and say maybe it's an expansion of the ISA bus. It's a PC, for God's sakes. There's gotta be some sort of additional expansion on there for the bus. On the other side here, now, this is what confuses me. This I know, I think is for radio control, but Crypto Museum says that this model of unit contains also a parallel port, but this is the wrong gender for a parallel port. This is um, more the gender you'd see with a 25 pin serial connector, but we already have two serial ports. So I don't know, maybe they, it, either it's a non-standard parallel port interface or this is a parallel port interface with an opposite gender, so you'll just need a gender swapper to fix that around. Otherwise, this is the radio module that's hiding here on the back. So we have our coaxial infrared antenna. We have a separate power connector because the main system power is hiding right here. Here, actually. And this is just a single unit that can be swapped out. There's a digital circuit boards and stuff like that in there. I'm assuming that's clean, but I don't want to handle this thing much more until I start doing some cleaning 
and some maintenance for this. I think a tear down this for this thing may be in order in a future video. But for now, I'm just going to admire this beautiful little thing and then go into the corner and cry that it got damaged in shipping. But there you have it. This is the Motorola MDT 9100-386. It's a cute CRT screen based uh, computer that you can fit into a vehicle and it looks fantastic if, you, of course, you want one in your car. But until next time, have a good one.